Okay, the June 27th uh, BPW reuse subcommittee meeting is now called to order. And reuse. What did I say? Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Reuse subcommittee meeting. Um, who's taking minutes? Did we ever establish that the last time? Is John Sass going to be taking minutes? Well, he's not. He's not here. Okay. Well, that's good. Does somebody else want to run it, and I'll uh, take a minute? Can they go in there instead? <laughs> okay. Um, we are honored to have our Ward 2 City Councilor here this morning. And uh, Paul, I'm going to give you the floor to talk about the thanks. Green Ordinance Project. Great, thanks. So I know you guys are doing a big thing this morning, You're kind of finalizing or talking about the reuse center. I actually think the ordinance we're coming up with trumps that. The reason I'm saying that is we need your help on it, which is the ordinance that is going to be the compostable ordinance. We are finalizing the details that Councillor Adams and I, but I wanted to update you on what we've done so far and what we'd like to ask of you because you're the obvious committee. And maybe this isn't true, but it would seem to me that this is the single biggest thing the city is, would undertake in terms of reuse to be compostable. So we are looking at two parts to that, of course, which was we started with just the styrofoam ban, but then as we looked at that, it was like, is it really worth all the effort? Because on a number of issues, this the sty and I'm using styrofoam and not the you know, scientific definition, I'm gonna use the common definition. That, you know, as we talked to Susan about this and you know, it's like if we're not gonna go compostable, it does it really make that much sense with all the other things we're trying to move forward. And so then we got excited about doing the single-use plastic bag, and that's going to be the ordinance, which is these two parts. Which, what we're going to, what we're looking at is again, we're going to bring this up at a special session next Earth Day, where we'll have a number of environmental issues coming up. So that's, you know, eight nine months away. What we're looking at in terms of process is. Very similar to what we did for two years, and with Councilor Adams and I who put this together for two years on the stormwater piece, interesting, in the same room, which was, here's something that you're liable to get a piece of the public really either upset about, angry about right away, and really was an education piece. And we finally, pa we passed that nine to nothing with almost, and it was a tax, with almost no opposition. Very, very little opposition. There was opposition in terms of the details of how you do it, what, how you rate the different places, um, the houses in terms of what the amount they would pay. But in terms of the actual idea of doing it, we had almost zero opposition because we spent a year kind of doing an education piece. We see that as the same process here. But in order to do that, we, did, we had help with that. I mean, we have, so, we have a lot of work just coordinating this. And so what we're coming to ask from you guys, if you're willing to do it and to talk about it, whether it's today or the next meeting, is we need help on that piece. And the help we need would be first, over the next few months, uh, to start to get things out into the press. And we really are at the point where it's very practical. I've talked to a few members who said, oh yeah, I'll do a letter, I'll do a letter. And I keep saying, we need them now. And it's like, we've got to put something together. And Who's going to do some letters? Does the reuse committee, it would be great to have an op-ed piece. Mm -hmm. We've been advised that it would probably be best if it came from us as city councilors, but we don't need that. We're not looking for that as in any way, shape, or form for mm -hmm. us to be getting credit for anything. Mm -hmm. If the reuse committee says, we want to be the leaders on this, we're totally happy for you to do it. You know, it's, but what we need is, we're at that practical step. We need some, an op-ed piece or a couple. We need to start getting letters. We'd like to have three or four letters a month starting to come in. It can be from members of the reuse committee. It could be, can you guys reach out to people? It can be on various topics of single use plastic bags, on styrofoam, it can be on both pieces. It can be on effects with climate change. It can be on pieces about landfill, whatever it is. But we need help with that. Um, Partially because we go to so many people asking them over and over for political favors, like, can you write an op-ed on this? Can you show? And we can't keep going. It's like too much for us. Mm -hmm. We also have two or three other projects going right now. 
But we are <coughs> spending, this is our main thing. I mean, this is what we're spending most of our time. What we're doing is, we've already met with the Chamber Economic Development Committee, Excellent. which was an amazing meeting because I presented there and I talked all about the plastic bags and what we need to do and all of this stuff. And there were, there were almost everybody was there. I even presented that for places like Stop and Shop. So just to back off, I won't assume you guys know all of this. Basically, on the pla single-use plastic bags, the ordinance will be somewhere about 2,000 square feet for commercial establishments. So if you're smaller than 2,000, 2,200 square feet, it won't apply to you. And it's only for commercial establishments. So it's not, and it's only for at the checkout, right? So Stop and Shop, for example, can continue to use 2,200 square feet. 2,200. 2,200. Did I say 22,000? You said 22,000. 2,000. Oh, 2000. Somewhere around there. Okay. Um, we're modeling this on ordinances out of Brookline and the Greenfield, what Greenfield is working on now and some things we've seen in California. One of the interesting things was, and I guess I'll throw this, how many single-use plastic bags, just guess, the city of Northampton and these establishments use a year? What'd you guess? 13 million. 13 million. How'd you know that? It's about 13, <laughs> it's somewhere between, you know, we don't have the exact number, between probably 11 million and 14 million. How did just I, that? yes, wow. so let me tell you how we came, just Northampton, 10, say 10 million, conserving 10 million of these bags. They probably all fit in one small box, but no, no, they don't they're actually. very thin, they don't. But here's, I went to Gary a while back um, before his wife died and talked to him at Sirios, the guy who runs Sirios, and he's great, you know, they've, been really trying in every yeah, way they can. They, they even share. had that bag yeah. share, which yeah. I was, it's not working if you talk to them. People take the bags and you never bring them back. They've tried it four times. There's just hundreds of bags just hundreds. Yeah. here. But I said, we talked, he said, they were using, until recently, now they use 15,000 bags a year. I said, well, what were you 15, using? 15,000 single-use plastic bags Paper a year. bags. Single-use plastic oh, bags. Oh, I thought they eliminated plastic bags. No, they use a little bit. Not mm -hmm. always. If somebody asks, or they absolutely need it, or uh -huh. they're putting meat in, or mm -hmm. occasionally. Oh, it's okay. They used to, a year, use a quarter of a million bags. So we sat down with some paper and we said, okay, how are you, what do you relate to? Because what are the big places? It's Stop and Shop, Walmarts, mm -hmm. um, a Big Y, State Street, Cereals. Yes. Those are the big ones that this would apply to, and the drugstores. Yes. Okay, that's that's yeah, pretty nice. much yeah. who we're talking about. There may be a couple I'm missing. Use, I'm sorry, Paul. Two hundred forty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand. And now they're just using fifteen thousand. Yeah, and even that, he's phasing that out. Wow. So but when no, we look okay. at how many bags are used in the entire year, and he and I sat down and we compared Stop and Shop, and there we estimated it probably is more like fifteen million. But we were trying to be conservative because right. we don't know it was. So that's not a scientific number, but we're talking about millions of bags. Right. Mm. Millions of bags. So the, we went to the chamber, presented this. Now, the chamber five years ago, the, the Economic Development Committee met with the owners of the supermarkets to discuss this. Just so you know, Stop and Shop is probably the most progressive. Now, whether it's mm. that because they are environmentally astute or they're economically astute, they really want a corporate. They see how much money they save if they could eliminate bags. It turns out that Northampton is the single highest user in Stop and Shop of bags you bring back and reuse. Oh, really? We are the single in the, in the entire corporate chain. That's wow. Right. Now, why did they have that happen? Because they put in, they did this at a number of their stores. Remember a few years ago, they paid. The, the, it was the, the bags, if you, you got a nickel a bag. Right. Oh, yeah. And they phased that out. But obviously that carrot helped. Mm -hmm. And Northampton has become, be, has started, it's still, you know, it, there's a dramatic way to go. But it obviously worked mm -hmm. to do the carrot piece. Mm -hmm. So we looked at, there is, in Los Angeles County, they've put in place an ordinance that says you have to charge 10 cents per bag. So that's not the carrot, that's more the stick. Mm, right. And who gets the 10 cents? The store gets the 10 cents with no tax on it. Hmm. We already looked at, we cannot, we're looking at legally, we're not allowed except through legislative action to do that. Now that may be something we can do three years down the road and experiment, but we can't, or, through ordinance, local ordinance, 
have any kind of taxing or monetary rebates that we institute without the legislative action. How do we get away? Sorry to interrupt. But how do we get away with then that there was a ten uh, Hawaii and uh, Maine, some other state have ten cents mandatory on on even so. Not Massachusetts. Massachusetts right. law does not allow local communities to do this. To mm -hmm. that's all. It's so Massachusetts it's law. Would have to be a state law. Yeah, it would have to be a st or give us permission. So, but Stop and Shop was really behind it. Big Y, which has always been, you know, problematic around union stuff, and environmental stuff, at least much, was much more uh, aggressively opposed to it. And this was five years ago. Everybody in the economic, so we presented and we said, we'll do these just at the supermarkets. Here's what we're going to do. And they were like, why aren't you doing more? Every person there. So we were expecting, okay, here's going to be our biggest, we're going to have to sell this thing. Who's your audience again? Sorry. The Economic Development Committee of the Chamber. Say, yeah. And they were like, how about the single-use bags every day that the Gazette is delivered in? Right. How about water bottles? They're doing in other towns. And we're like, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> bunch of right. Right. I mean, you guys want to be out there with us taking the heat on this. We'll go for the whole thing. Now we, So we had a discussion, and we decided, for example, the Gazette and the plastic bags in the New York Times. Newspapers right now are struggling so much for us to take on the Gazette and well, tell them. What's the alternative? That's yeah, you know what the alternative? You know what plastic bags do serve a purpose yes. sometimes. So the alternative is to go back to when we didn't have them, which was, mm -hmm. you know, when we were kids and mm -hmm. you had a paper boy who delivered it on the porch. That's mm -hmm. not really an economic or you alternative. Spread it anymore. all over your house to dry out. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there isn't much of an alternative for them right now. Mm -hmm. There is, just so you know some of the details, plastic, the paper bags do cost a bit more, anywhere from a, a half a cent more, depending on the bag, to one and a half cent more. So it is a cost for them. What we're look, so what we, so they wanted to push us even further. So they're obviously completely behind this. They're not ready to vote to be behind it, but the, almost everybody was there at that meeting. And Suzanne Beck, the head of the chamber, is completely for this. They were for it. So we're scheduling a meeting to meet with the business community who will be most affected in September. And we've got them behind us. So that with the chamber behind us, we're pretty well set and we'll start going around. We're trying to meet with the various managers of the stores. Mm -hmm. We imagine that once again, it's gonna be Dunkin' Donuts, and some of the Asian restaurants there was, I don't, did I tell you about the survey the kids did at Youth Commission, just very quickly, because I know you have much more business to do, but they went around the Youth Commission, who was really uh, aggressively pushing us to do the styrofoam ban, did a survey, not scientific, but they went around to 22 restaurants downtown and about 10 in Florence to ask, are you use, currently using styrofoam? Mm -hmm. If you are, would you be willing to change. And of the 22 restaurants, I believe it was 16 are not using styrofoam. Huh. Well, three that are using styrofoam said we'd be willing to change, even if it would cost more money. And three said, no, we won't be willing to change. Two of those were Asian restaurants, which is often seems to be the case when we've asked other places. And one of them was Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. When they went to Florence, they had a slightly different reaction. I think they did eight or ten restaurants about four are not using styrofoam, the others are, and they basically told them, get out of our store. Um, Wait, say that again? Hmm. I didn't get Four were not using styrofoam, and the others had a hostile reaction. And out of how many? Ten. It's not, so, it, it about four, it was about 10. So about they're 10. supposed to send me the data. Um, it, you know, I'd use this more anecdotally, because mm -hmm. it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, comprehensive. They just kind of decided on an afternoon they go out, and so it was probably, there are probably some places that are closed and so, but I think it's at least informative and it does seem to align with what I've read and I've called a few places that have passed this. I've talked to the folks in Brookline and of course I've talked to Suzanne about Amherst. Um, it seems like that's usually Dunkin' Donuts or other kind of coffee places like mm -hmm. it, Mr. Donut. Pess. What's that? Pess. The, the um, uh, oh, yeah, 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 and Cumberland Farms, Cumberland yeah. Farms. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so, so it seems pretty clear to me what uh, Paul is gonna is presenting with uh, 
uh, to the city council on Earth Day and what our role could be. The question is, does the BPW uh, allow, by our mission and our objectives, the ability to get involved, uh, basically lobbying for mm -hmm. something like this? Mm -hmm. uh, now, there's two different things here, Paul. Yep. One is us as a committee. The, the, there's the other is us as individuals, not as members of the subcommittee. And you know, I'm sure it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, so, but I just want to make that clarification because mm -hmm. we need to talk about that in terms of, in fact, one of the things that's not on the agenda that Susan and I have talked about is that we do need to, at some point, deal with mission and deal with objectives and get the BPW's uh, approval on that to make sure that we're within our uh, parameters. Well, since the council is the one who actually writes the ordinance on committees, and we did that, I spoke to Councilor Adams, President Dwight, and even the mayor on this, and it would be great to talk to, you know, to Ned, but it seems right within the alignment of, you know, these are issues that affect... This is not a net issue, this is a BPW issue, not a DPW. A BPW issue, yeah. but t Terry to... So this is David and right. Roe and okay. their cohorts. So, I'm not sure why it wouldn't be in terms of, of backing things, but... Well, it it's not... A, I, David, if I can speak and you join in, <laughs> it's not a question of support, it's a question of the political... For instance, if when I worked for the... when I was on the food bank board, there were things we could not do that violated our charter. So I'm not, I'm just not sure. I have yeah. no idea so what the answer all is. all we're asking for then is truthful letters mm -hmm. about the issue. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be talking at all about yeah. how anybody should vote, yeah. but just encouraging the population to understand what the issue is. And it would seem to me this is the most logical place to talk about reuse as a community. And, um, you know, I worked on trying to get something like this going in the business community uh, with Karen McQuillan seven years ago. Yeah. So for somebody like me, it's, uh, you know, it makes me very happy to see that the things have kind of come to the point where people are ready for that sort of change where they weren't when yeah, I first arrived. Yeah, I agree. It's a change. So, uh, so Clearly, I would be, you know, I'm 100%, 150% behind something like this, and I appreciate the fact that the council was taking a stand on something like this. So um, I think what needs to happen is we need to speak as a committee great. about what we're going to do, and then uh, if you want, Paul, we can get back to you That'd and be great. say, here's here's what our plan of action is for something like this. Great. Uh, I think everyone here would really uh, like to see something like this. Okay, happen. that's fine. So the two things that if you could would be letters to the editor. The two things we're looking at, you yep. may have many more ideas, but the two specific things we could use, letters to the editor between now and next April, so it's not a huge amount of letters, a couple of months from this committee or people you knew or could find if you could take that on, that would be one thing about the issue itself, both on, on the two separate issues. And the other would be to look at putting together or even helping Councilor Adams and I write an op-ed piece, and that would be in the something to come out in the fall. So those are the two very specific things and any other way you think it could be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Uh, take a left question from Paul before it leaves. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, you mentioned some of these <coughs> incredible statistics about plastic bag use, and uh, if you have them in any kind of written form that you could forward to us, then that will help us in terms of writing letters yeah. and that kind of I'll stuff. I'll get that to you. And, and also to. sources, just good sources of yeah. information. Yeah. 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 People yeah. are going to be writing letters. <coughs> Yep. Saves them some time. Yep. And Paul, just so I'm clear, when you say the two separate issues, are we talking um, styrofoam and plastic bags? Yes. Or are we talking those not yep. compost? Not well, compost. both, it's a compostable ordinance. So what we're doing is we're putting those two under this right. heading of a compostable ordinance, and here are the two things we're talking about. Okay, so how does composting fit into the plastic bags and styrofoam uh, idea? I mean, we. I think of plastic bags as recyclable, styrofoam, you know, we recycle styrofoam, so how does, how does it get defined as a compost issue? Well, for, for example, the plastic bags, if they, dis the substitute for the plastic bags would have to be marine, well, there are some, I guess, that are plastic bags that are marine biodegradable, so there's a, a very specific scientific term of what is allowable, what would be allowable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, do you have a, sorry. Yes, Rob. Uh, is, is there 
any specific legislation either existing or proposed on at the state level? Yes, it, but it's been held up, and you probably know more about what's been happening. I believe for the last three years, maybe it's longer, forgot the name of the woman, but it kind of comes to committee. The committee talks about it. It seems, um, I agree with David. I think there's a change, and it's happening right now. I think it's happening on the legislature. So we'd love, you know, one of the things we're doing is calling Peter, calling the legislators and saying, we'd love this to be statewide. It'd be a lot easier mm -hmm. for us. It's sure. like, you guys do it. Yeah. Do it statewide. Yeah. Be a leader, you know. And, and I don't think, I think we're looking, and I think the important piece of this is not only are we using millions of bags here, but we see this, if we pass it here, we're going on the road in this community. We're going to go to East Hampton. We're going to go to Amherst. We're going to talk to people. People will call us. It mm -hmm. happens all the time when you do something kind of mm -hmm. they, they're calling me all the time about our solar project. Mm -hmm. It starts to spread. Once it starts to spread mm -hmm. and their communities doing this and we focus on say a town like Springfield for three, five years down the road, I know it's a long ways off, then you can get the state legislature. Mm -hmm. So it's like this is the kind of thing that may have to be pushed from below because it's got so much pressure from the top to not do anything mm -hmm. as we see with things like an expanded bottle bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Susan. Uh, the, uh, I think Debbie was oh, next. Oh, I see Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I wouldn't want to see the bag share sidelined in any way, the bag share project. You know, they're trying to, I mean, I'm, I've been in touch with her and collecting reusable bags that you probably know that are maybe not, that the Tuesday market, its aim is to go totally bag free. That yep. is, have only those bag share or other you know, people bring from home bags so uh, and I was just in Sirius and there are loads of bags hanging there yeah, you know I mean I think it's yeah but I talked to Gary you should talk to Gary about yeah. the problem we're not we well, love that program I don't, program. Think, I don't I think, think it's I don't think it's mutually exclusive yeah. I think it's right. like I think it no, pushes no, it no but I think you're right so I mean I support that in spite of maybe people take them home but then they use them again too. no no I support it totally yeah. and again there's a letter right there just a letter right. about Mm -hmm. That right. whole thing and how mm -hmm. great it is, or mm -hmm. a couple of letters about that. I mean, sure, right, that's sure. the kind of thing we, right. we could use. Mm -hmm. We totally support it. I was just saying, when Gary is getting a little discouraged mm -hmm. that it's not working the way he was hoping it was right. working, people are taking the bags. That's all. Mm -hmm. right. Ro, you had a Yeah. Did you, had, do you have a proposed ordinance for um, next April written out yet? Or you We're about 90% of the way okay. there. We're so tweaking. Can we give a copy of that when you, yeah. when you have that? Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, I'll go on record to say that as I, the longer I'm in the waste business, the more I feel that recycling is overrated. There are some materials that makes a huge amount of sense to recycle and others it doesn't. And what it does, it gives the public this false sense mm -hmm. of I'm doing the right thing when they shouldn't be generating the material to right. begin with. Mm -hmm. So in, in the plastic bag situation and the um, Styrofoam for takeout is a perfect example. You know, you, if you the, collect it, everyone thinks, oh, I can drink out of styrofoam cups because I'm recycling it. Right. You know, uh, it, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. so I, I love this. I and love that's, this. that's what we need. That's mm -hmm. the kind of education. I mean, even when I hear you say that, I go, mm -hmm. God, that's well put. And mm -hmm. it's, we need that. Yep. That's, yep. we need that kind of thing out there, yep. people understanding it. Well, <coughs> last thing that, um, I know there's a home rule thing, so if you wanted to put in, in Northampton a 10 cent a bag can't charge, do, can't you do. can't get that as a home rule thing? Yeah, but that will take us a couple of years. So we're not going to wait for that. If we can amend mm. this thing two mm -hmm. years from now, if we think that's the way to go, Mike, when we talked about that, our guess is by two years from now it will all be up and flowing. Mm -hmm. And usually that's a way, like Stop and Shop did, you kind of prime the pump for a year or so and gets it moving. Okay. Paul, thank you, guys. You. Thanks a lot. So, um, you'll get back to me sometime in Someone the next from couple the, of weeks. Yeah, we'll talk about it either uh, at this meeting a little bit if we have time, or at the next meeting, and we'll get back to you and let you know what Great. who's okay. moving ahead. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for your thank work. You. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Um, has everyone read the minutes from the last meeting? Um, and actually, mm -hmm. if they're happy to three, I filled the tree. I didn't push the right button, and, and it didn't go back to back. So there are three pages. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Okay. I, I read them already. So. And, and before we do that, David, I'm just wondering, since we're already half 
halfway through the meeting, and I know Roe has to take off. I'm wondering if we can just look at the at the agenda and see what what can be set aside. Let, let's go to the minutes, and then we can do that. Okay. Um, do people need a couple of minutes to read the minutes? Mm -hmm. I glanced through them, but I just didn't have Because if, if, if you want to do that, we could talk about Paul's proposal while people are looking uh, through the minutes. You know, my, my guess is because we haven't come up with a mission and the BPW has never really laid down a, um, an area of responsibility for the reuse committee, I'm not sure that we can, as a subcommittee, without the BPW's approval, what we could do is make a proposal to the right. BPW and say we would like to support this uh, ordinance proposal uh, as a committee, and what do you think about that? So those are our options. Rob? David, when you say that the BPW has never um, in, uh, gone forward in support of the committee, you're, you're saying specifically we haven't addressed, given them a mission, we haven't given the BPW a mission and um, that they have said yes, we endorse this mission. Is that what you're saying? Well, what, what I'm saying is, there's no mission statement for the reuse committee. Right. Although there was many years ago. It's, I mean, there was when we first started. Well, I never saw anything. I, 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 I haven't I, been able to find anything ever. There was something that Karen had developed um, in, um, in preparation for a grant, uh -huh. um, but I have not been able to find anything. Ro, I showed up for a. Uh, a solid waste education action committee yes. meeting yes, yes. a few years ago, yes, yes. and then I was told, "Oh, this is the reuse committee now." So, uh, so w the BPW may have created something, but it never got to the committee. Right. Okay. But so that's why I don't have anything to work with. Uh, it, I wonder if Paul won't do the same pitch to the to the board or to the or to Ned as mm -hmm. as he did here. Uh, I think what he's looking for is citizen advocacy. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why he's here, but, um, you know, who, who knows, we could, if you think it's a good idea, we could recommend it to him. He's clearly pretty passionate about it. But I yeah. think we do, I think Rump. we do need to go down the road of clarifying the political push yeah. of this committee I because agree. it's not clear in my mind either. Yeah. So I know that as BPW, we're very careful to steer clear of political issues as an, as an advocate. And, and we're part of the BPW. Exactly. So if you guys on the top aren't doing it, we can't do it. So I likely. will, I'm, if I could ask you to talk to Ned, but I will also have uh, BJ put it on the agenda, if that's, if you sure. agree to that, yeah. on our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, has everybody had a chance to go through the minutes? Mm -hmm. um, any changes to the minutes as written? You'll move to approve minutes. Second. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Okay. Susan, you wanted to reorder the uh, agenda. Uh, I just think that it would be good to maybe prioritize the agenda, the remaining items, because there are a number of things. Oh, I think you underestimate me as a chairperson in getting through okay. the agenda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to insult. <laughs> Go for it. Um, okay. Event coordinator updates. Uh, we don't really need to talk about past events we did at the last meeting. so. There, there are three events for the fall, is that right? The Peter, there's your event, the Debbie, there's your event, and then there's the toy event. Right. No, and oh, and there's a also a solid waste, uh, a, the rigid plastics uh, recession. So right. cool. uh, hi, Diane. Um, so, who, uh, I don't really know the dates of those. Who's the first one? <coughs> well, 18th, uh, sorry, 11th is the first one. The first and, one. Yeah. With the rain date being the 18th, which is. Has, has that been approved by yes. Smith Oak? Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. Good work there. Well, yeah, good work, mm -hmm. Susan, forgetting yes. the date. <laughs> um, so then Deb's on the 18th happens anyway, and but we would then. Okay, so Peter, the, you should talk about what you need for what you've done so far for the event and what you need. I can't think of anything right now that I actually need different. I mean, it's it's as hard. As volunteers, you mean? Yeah, uh, for instance, yeah, yeah. Well, or publicity or anything else. The publicity, I think we need to start earlier. Mm -hmm. for sure. The free publicity. So, mm -hmm. September 1st, September 30th, well, September 15th, w what are you thinking? Well, definitely, as soon as, when is, when is Labor Day, 4th? The 1st. The 1st is the The 1st? Okay, well, pretty much right after Labor Day would be the time. It's a two-week lead mm -hmm. time for the Gazette, always, for the freebie in the Hampshire Life, and they always give us something. So, getting that, and maybe combining the two, 
publicities would actually make a lot of sense. You know? uh -huh. So there's actually two events that we're pushing at the yeah. same time. And what, what are your thoughts of, of volunteers? Well, uh, the, the main thing is at the beginning, from <coughs> the tax sale at the beginning and at the end. Middle is not, not much to do. Right. And I had thought if the swap meet aspect of it could be broadened, I didn't know exactly how to do it, but then only the only people who have registered can if there's uh, do not cross lines, you know, put up so that the regular public can't you keep that until maybe eight thirty or something. You know, so the, the only thing I want to say is a lot of people didn't see it because it was in the back. I know it was raining, but still, um, and even with the signage, which was great, Susan. Yeah. Um, that's. One of the problems of being in the back of the school, people don't see an event happening. Uh -huh. You'll get a lot more people if it's in the front parking lot. Yeah, the space Everyone's parked, everyone's parked, so. You can get 58 people in the back without <coughs> even really using it. I can't imagine you get more about 20, 25 in the Well, you could use park. both parking lots. Yeah, you could. And then you could have people park in the back. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly worth looking at. Definitely worth looking at. Um, right now, it's only the rear parking lot that is reserved. Uh -huh. Reserve the parking lot. See, got it. Okay. If it were on the rain date, then we w would need Debbie's par parking. You know, <coughs> um, so that that would make a whole different. I'm assuming it's not raining on the 18th. Okay, right. There's another parking lot on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you reserve the front? I can. I have to check it. Yep. Mm. Well, um, Roger's supposed to be on this too, and mm -hmm. coordinate with Debbie and. Okay. What makes sense, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, balloons might have helped. You know, signs and balloons tied to the sign. Well, well as you, I mean, at the the rigid plastics event, mm -hmm. you have a lawn yeah. that's filled mm -hmm. with yeah. stuff that draws people in. Yeah. yeah. So no, I don't yeah. disagree. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the logistics being the other lot's actually bigger, the one further toward the yeah. BPW that's actually mm -hmm. bigger there. But I yeah, think we'll look at that again. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Debbie. Uh, yeah, well, that makes me think uh, that's a really great point of putting things out in front, provided it's a good day, um, to draw people in, mm -hmm. like Bob Hefner's um, truck, truck yeah. and maybe even set up workshops out front if it's a nice day, and we have to have the space. That could be out. Uh, so there's the, there's the parking lot question, but I think it's a terrific idea. Um, I've been making a list, and I was going to go over it with Mac about what he, we thought we needed in terms of volunteers for this. Um, and I'm getting together. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting artists. Um, some, as you know, are volunteering very interesting skills, like Dave Geezy. That's towards the other, towards our setup over at the landfill. But then I have a couple of graphic artists we met with one yesterday who just has tons of loads of skills and it's going to help us on the Facebook media, social media, um, reach out. And um, yeah, so I mean I'm, I'm keeping those in mind because I've asked artists to contribute two hours of help. I know we usually rustle up volunteers from here present which is not a whole big group, so... And we also have a whole mailing list now yes, of yes, yes. people as well that we can access. Yes, yes, so... So what, what, so what we're requiring a is, a, yes, is a list of what you yes. need, what responsibilities, yes. and maybe even times, and then we yes. can send that out yes. to the list and say, you know, sign up here. Yes, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think mine would change much than what I sent you. But, you know, task-oriented thing, which I think was six people total, uh -huh. <coughs> but only two in, in the middle of things. Well, Oh, it's going on. Right. Okay. Um, we don't need to talk about all the events that are coming up. Those are the two next ones. So let's move on to, uh, unless there are comments about those specific two events. Okay. Endorsement protocol. Endorsement protocol. This was, I think, a Oh, this is from that Diana, right. Not from Diana about, uh, and, and it's related actually to mm. Roe and David's um, and our David Squared's uh, conversation about what is appropriate for us to endorse and and approve and encourage. Roger um, brought it up last meeting. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, and part of it came up in relation to the play workshop and the business. This this adventure playground activity. It's actually the first 
roundup that's taking place this weekend where you create a playground with reused materials, basically. The kids create it. And, um, you know, uh, the person doing it approached us with an interest in uh, connecting with us in a bunch of different ways. We've given her some materials, I have anyway. And uh, the question became like how much, this is, this is something that on some level it's teaching kids to reuse creatively. So how far do we go or where do we stop in terms of endorsing an activity like that? You know? As a committee. Yeah. yeah. And in our, I, I thought maybe we should specify how we use the city website versus the Facebook site mm -hmm. versus our email blast list and just, just to talk about it and make sure that we are all on the same page. Of, because sometimes I'm home alone, um, about to send out an email to all of our contacts, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure I should do this. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. this I see, I mean, the email list is related, but it's a little different. There are yeah. like a couple different topics yep. there, I think. Yep. The, this dovetails with our discussion with Paul, I think. I think it's something that, that um, I'm wondering if you could put some thoughts together more specifically, maybe you already have, and give them to Sue, and Sue talked to Ned, and the, and I and I'll put it in the board agenda. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, w as a group, we have to, as a reuse committee group, we have to be careful about um, what we have to do. But we have to first clarify what our limits are politically with the BPW, and then we can more clearly make decisions on on these other things. Well, part of this is about protocol, but part of it is, I know if, uh, you know, Diana and I are supposed to be in charge of finding volunteers for events. We talk, we have our event coordinator updates each meeting, and so I'm aware of what the events are that are coming up that we need volunteers for. So if someone were to email me in between meetings and talk about an event that I've never heard of before, then I'd go, well, I'd like to help out, but, you know, how is that connected to, to the reuse committee and uh, so uh, can I even use the volunteer uh, list that we've come up with for a reuse event for an event that we haven't really talked about at a reuse committee. So that's, that's what this discussion is about. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's related to the mission thing again. Yeah. I mean it's like yes. we can decide all these things and figure out what protocol is appropriate but we still don't have a super clear mission. So. I, not to put everything off, but that's really kind of the foundation of all of this. Once it's clear, and we have a board uh, BPW, um, you know, clearance. At the I'd like to make a recommendation. I'd like to, uh, you know, we've had a very successful recenter committee meeting in between meetings. How about a committee to come up with a proposal for the Board of Public Works about what it is that we do, what our mission is, what our objectives are, and we can meet at my house sometime in the next two weeks. Uh, let's do it, whoever's interested in being on that committee. It's a great idea, and we actually, I think, had spoken about doing that before, and I dropped the ball and we did not make it happen. So Here's um, another opportunity. Here's another opportunity. I'm yes. going to be gone. Yeah, you don't, you don't need the to be there, Susan. Weeks. You're going to have an one opportunity to address it at, it at, at, at a meeting like this, one, wasn't it? One meeting might do it. Yeah, it should. I think I can do that. So I, I believe in the, the when we talked about it before, it was David, myself, Bro, and maybe Diana. Were you on Possibly. <laughs> I can look in the minutes to see. Well, whichever. It doesn't matter. Whoever wants to be on, on it, yeah, yeah, let's just get okay, it done. So, so you're, you're going to <coughs> just pick a date and send... Do a uh, or Ro, I think you're the busiest person here, so I think you should pick a time and date that works, and then let's see if everybody can make it. Okay. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. All right. And all right. Let me do that before I leave. What about next Friday morning? Oh no, no, next Friday is Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. Wonder if it <laughs> <laughs> is, is that weekend totally out for everybody? You're gone. Ah, uh, yeah, I won't be around that weekend. Yeah, uh, you're gone for two weeks. Well, more or less. I'm back at for a little bit in between. Susan, when are you around? I mean, we, we could make this when you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. When are you gone? Uh, I am going to be back the 9th, 10th, and 11th of July. 
you're okay. back those three days. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. you would be available. You're not going to be overwhelmed with details you're catching up on since you're going to be gone. I mean, I, I can I can bring my brain to a meeting. For okay. You know, an hour or two, and you can even have your computer there and be working on it while you're what it's worth. listening so with one ear. Thursday work well because you're here anyway. You know? Or oh, you're not you're on vacation period. Um, <clears throat> Thursday ten. evening on the tenth is likely a problem because that's when the recycling committee in Amherst meets. What about Thursday afternoon evening? I always figure, can you just tell me real quickly what your days are for here? For here, Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. Um, and other other times as assigned. What about Thursday morning the 10th mm -hmm. at 8.30? Would that work? Other than 8.30, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some strong tea for you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> We might be able to get in here too, unless that'd be less convenient. It's up to you guys. Yeah, I'm in a brand new house that love showing it off. Yeah, good. He's in a brand new energy efficient house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's tour. Three hundred dollars a year to heat it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So will that work? That'll work. Okay. So the mission of the, I mean the point of this meeting is mission and. Um, Objectives. An objective. And the good news is that David and I could bring up on the 9th and get some, bring to that meeting some BPW thoughts. Mm -hmm. It would be great too if people could just kind of do their own pre work and, I, and make your own idea. list yeah. of what you think the committee's objectives could be. Yeah. If I everyone agree. brought that to it, we'd be that much ahead. Okay, moving on. Recenter update. Uh, Matthew, the best person. Uh, Diana and I can, can do together. Um, yeah, we we have had we got some exciting news this week. Um, Bob Reckman, former city councilor, former BPW member, very experienced contractor, has agreed to be our construction coordinator. Now that is great. For yes, that's so good. That and and good. Good for him and good for us. Yeah, by the way. Exactly. yeah, yeah. and he's great. he knows the people at Central Services. He knows our architect. He knows Louis Hasbrook. Uh, mm -hmm. He's, he's been a player for years in the community with big building projects, so, and he's, I went over to talk to him about it, he just jumped on it. He was really wow. interested in it, so uh, he's he already... He said it was your enthusiasm in part. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's known me for a long time, and he's known my tendencies in this direction, <laughs> so, uh, um, any rate, so he's already starting to work on things like the materials list, and... Um, familiarizing himself with all the players and so forth. And so he's he's on board, and then tomorrow we actually have Dave Giese coming. Uh, he's coming at 7. And, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, and I, I said I would try to be there with the permit at 7 so we can post it. We have a deconstruction permit now. Um, which so we do have we have we have one electronically Thanks and, and to Susan pushing oh, for it. And oh. we, we can check and see if we actually have one here, physical well, one. Oh we okay, well we I forwarded it to you guys. We can actually use we have a PDF of it or a scanned yeah. copy yeah. of it. Yeah. And uh, Louis Hasbrook said that we could use that scanned copy and the email to post if we did not have it in hand. But I think yeah, I mean it, it's it, it might it's it, here. it might come yeah. today. Yeah. Right. I, it's yeah, it's unlikely that it's it was here yesterday, but okay. it might come today. So if somebody wants to check in with Deb, well, I might not, I not, I may not be back but, here, but I'd be willing. But to But there's just really no need to even check in because he he gave us permission to use yeah. the scan copy yeah, and the you know, email. Right. So let's just go for go for that. Okay. And okay. It, it it makes things simple. So that's that's in order. So Dave is coming to start working on the uh, the non-functioning garage door that's on the front tomorrow and that'll be I think probably the main focus and Bob is going to try to get over there tomorrow morning too mm -hmm. and he'll meet Dave. He's a, I, I went out with Bob like the morning after we talked we went out Wednesday he got a chance to see the site Ned was there I'm not mm -hmm. sure how that exactly happened but I think Ned, he was coming to see your progress because I told him that you guys had done a lot of work. And he, he paid us a very good compliment on the amount of progress that we made just in cleaning the place out. Um, so, and he and Bob had a chance to talk about various details. And so that was very, very good mm -hmm. that that all, all came together. Um, and then um, Debbie and I went to Holyoke and we got some paint. <laughs> we investigated this free paint thing. Oh, and did you? Yeah, mm -hmm. we got it. it's 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 totally like hit or miss, you know. You, mm -hmm. 
there's somebody that mixes up uh, latex paint and puts it out and it's available to whomever and so we showed up and there were several five gallon buckets and we got a pastel blue there were some kind of greens that looked a little too institutional and so we left them but we got the we got five gallons of blue paint and we went we're ready for that so what five else five gallons I, of what Oh, blue, blue paint. pastel paint. Okay. Uh -huh. so, bright light. Bright light. <laughs> yeah. Not quite. Pretty so, bright light. And then, you know, as far as the money piece goes, I mean, July 1st is coming. So once that date comes, then we have access to the 10000 So was, was, was the liability issue worked out with uh, the DP, I don't know if it was the DPW or the BPW, whether or not people that were volunteering there needed to sign a waiver. We have a waiver. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyone who does work, we have a waiver form. <coughs> probably Central Services. Central yeah, Services. Probably. Yeah. 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 And I've tell me that, that tell Debbie, I've mm -hmm. just been worrying here. Tell oh. me your arm had nothing oh, no. to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah, That's right. Just put it here. Just no, no, no. Here. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with that. Okay, good. Um, uh, as far as the money thing goes, uh, Ned has said that he will if we if we can get a list of materials needed to him, he will vet the list and figure out what we have in house and what can be ordered from the places that he can order through the through the DPW. Um, if we if other people start buying things, it gets to be very complicated. They don't get reimbursed tax, all those things. So the plan is if there's stuff to be purchased, that I would purchase it and that I can be reimbursed as an employee. Um, it makes things a lot, a lot simpler and, and happier for the, the city. And I, I also wanted to read a little statement that I put in a, um, an email to people just because it's, it's a good thing to be said. Um, and that is, this is a groundbreaking project. The city is not used to having volunteers so heavily involved and people are un understandably leery. I ask for everyone's patience. We will prove to the naysayers that the power of community <laughs> volunteerism is formidable and capable of making great things happen. We are already proving it, and some people are impressed. In the meantime, this project will be met with skepticism. That's a given we have to work with. The best news is that Ned is on our side and wants to help us make this happen. So we just need to be patient. So I know it's a little frustrating that people can't just buy stuff and get reimbursed and stuff, but, but we have you know, we have some parameters that are a little limiting and we're going to make it happen anyway. <laughs> so, there's my little soapbox. Are yes. you going to email that statement? I can email it to yeah. everybody, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I just want to add that too. I just, I, I can't tell you how much I love the fact of people putting that physical labor in. It just is, it's so fabulous and so exciting and it, it, you know, that that is the leap that you need on something like this, even though we've been working for a long time. So I just, I wanted to express myself. You know, there's there's good precedent and, and here. I mean, every again. community that has a reuse center mm -hmm. has had this mm -hmm. a collection of volunteers right. that have made it happen. Right. It's, it's, it's been will. It's right. been right. people's will that's made right. these things happen. You said you want, I just wanted to capture it for the minutes. You said uh -huh. you were what? I, I'm just so overwhelmed and impressed at the energy and that significant energy because this is what moves a project like this forward, the action. Great, thank you. Um, so, what's next, Mac? Diana? Uh, I, I have a question about the electrical permit the, the, and the, con, the uh, construction permit. Mm -hmm. I think that Chris was looking into construction, but I kept forgetting to ask him about electrical. Does anybody know anything Is there more a about different that? permit required for electric? I'm unclear. It okay. sounded like it slightly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, would, I wanted to call Dave Pomerantz to just kind of give him an update on, okay. on what's happening, and I, and I also wanted to find out about his electrician and Tina Chen. Mm -hmm. you know, so I have a couple questions I will ask about permits and stuff. Okay, and, great. Um, and the city light fixtures. Yes. Well, they yeah. said that they had some used ones that could likely be used, so I'll follow up on that. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like things are going along well. Like we're mm -hmm. we're we've got sort of a next step in front of us. And your cut lists are fabulous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one question I have is for tomorrow. 
Or do you need volunteers? I mean, is do you think Dave Giese's just going to be out there with Bob? I mean, do we need more bodies to do some of the work, or is it just a preliminary deconstruction kind of day? Yeah, I'm not totally clear on that myself. I mean, we should probably, I don't know if we can reach Dave by phone, but I mean, I'm certainly going prepared to work tomorrow I, myself. When I spoke to Dave Giese about uh, dismantling that door, he, it sounded like it was going to be a slow process, like yeah. you're taking it down panel by panel, so, yeah. that, you know, that, so it can be reused. Yeah. So he wanted to take off the south wall of the little office so that you can get to that mm -hmm. door, and then take off the rollers. So that you can take them out of the track and take the pieces off, but it sounds like it's going to come down slowly in pieces. So a lot of volunteers wouldn't be helpful, but okay. two, three, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Right. And do we have two or three volunteers? I'd like to go over at some point, but I don't know when exactly. Yeah. You can either yeah, I'll, 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 okay. I'll the front end of it. Okay. Okay. And do yeah. we need more face masks or anything? I like left that, a pack I of. I think there are a couple out three, there, but least. we can always, you know, we can always use a little. Supply okay. of them out there. Well, let's talk but offline after yeah. the meeting. Yeah. And what's the uh, th is there a an opening date a proposed opening date? Well, one thing Bob is on vacation, and I, actually I am too. I'm both of us are going to be gone the last two weeks of July, so that is probably going to get in the way of an August first. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm I'm thinking it's probably going to be more like mid August or September first. Labor Day. Point. Yeah. Something like that. That can wouldn't I be so terrible. Yeah. Uh, that, they would be well, at least as a promotional launch. Yeah, if yeah, not yeah. The, you could yeah. have a soft launch before that. Yeah. But here's the thing. I mean, if it's, I don't know. Well, I guess we have the permitting, um, the the plan. Louis Hasbrook needs to see the plan. We need to get right. the plan from Tris. So that, that's going to be a delay. I was just, I remember thinking, being there with Central Services, and they and I said, how much time would yeah. it take? people who knew what they were doing to make this happen, right. and they right. said a couple days. Mm -hmm. right. So so it seems like kind of a shame to wait, you know. Mm -hmm. um, right. The thing is, Bob mm -hmm. is going to need to be there physically, I think, when we do the construction right. phase. Right. And um, if he's gone the last two weeks of July. Right. I don't think anyone's dragging their feet. They'll, yeah. they'll yeah. make it happen as soon as they can, yeah. right? Yeah. Bro? Um, I know that we had anticipated that it would be open for this summer because that was the ideal thing, but you know what? As it progresses, the most important thing right now is take advantage of the momentum. Even if we're o only open right. on non-event weeks in September and October, mm -hmm. I don't know that September and October are hu huge months. I think mm -hmm. they'll be huge, months. and I think the you know doing the publicity and I know it's not ideal from your original intentions, okay. but we just move forward. We set a precedent. Sure. Then it'll be so much easier next May. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. Do we have a sense of when we shut down for the winter? I mean, is it when when the, the thermometer hits 40? Yeah, I think it was, we said October, didn't we? Yeah, like around November 1st. Yeah, well, November 1st. well, but if, if you had, if, <laughs> if on November 8th, the temperature hadn't fallen below 40, uh -huh. would you would you keep yeah. it open until then? Why not? Yeah, Why not, right? It depends yeah. on what people's schedules are. I mean, as you long know, as there's know. gatekeepers yeah. out there and it's mm -hmm. okay with the, the DPW, we could be flexible. Yeah, on. that's an on. That's mm -hmm. an on. But we would have a, vo a representative volunteer from our committee, or right? Yeah, yeah. Staff it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think yeah. part of our uh, mission says our operating agreement. If we don't have enough volunteers, it doesn't yeah, open. Right. 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 Yeah. Yes. Right. I just um, that. So, anything else about? Uh, the recenter. It's, it's fantastic, Mac and Diana. You know, I, I would just say, you know, I was just so pleased that Bob agreed to do this because mm -hmm. I think yes. what we were coming up against is, is you basically have to have somebody that can deal with the DPW, can deal with central services, can deal with Louis Hasbrook and Tris Metcalf, and, okay. and, and also know how to know about materials and construction, yeah, you know. It's and almost a miracle. It really yeah, is and, a miracle. and it was like, yeah. this, is, this is a whole list of skills <laughs> that mm -hmm. I don't have, you know. Right. <laughs> and Bob has just done all that stuff, yeah. you know what I mean, so. That's he's, great. He's perfect. <clears throat> so he is, in effect, our point person with the yeah. city then. Because we were looking for well, no, Ned, Ned is Ned continues to be the point person with the city. He's he's the person who's has has the perspective of pulling all the groups together and knows what needs to happen and when. He's mm -hmm. he's kind of our project manager mm -hmm. slash mm -hmm. construction mm -hmm. guy. 
Yeah. Um, and, and Ned is our point person for the city. Hey, has anyone met with Marianne Labarge about this? No. Um, I think we need to meet with Marianne. Mm. And this is in her ward. And as you may well remember, the landfill was not a popular item mm. for a lot of people right. that live near the landfill. Mm -hmm. We want the support of the yes. city councilor, and we want the people that live around there to feel good about what's going to be happening. I think that's happen. an excellent yes. idea. So who's the right yes. person to do that? Uh, I could do that, because Marianne and I served on the mayor's task force together, mm -hmm. as, as did Roe. Uh, Ginny's in the neighborhood, right? Yes, yes she is. Ginny is in yeah. the neighborhood, yeah. 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 So she could maybe be yeah. a part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, that would be great. I'm actually looking for an excuse to let Marianne know that I'm now living in her world. <laughs> 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 So I don't know if you remember an exchange between she and I at the uh, <laughs> during that committee, where she almost took my life. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Invite her to stop in tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow? Just actually, that's tomorrow. a great idea. Yeah. Hey, Matt, ready? when you, whenever you need volunteers, that would be great to let me know because I mean, Marianne or finding other volunteers for you, yeah. I, I could be yeah. helpful with that. Right. My last so comment. Well, my very last comment about this is, is this is maybe a little bit too early, but at some point we should plan a grand opening for this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. Agreed. I think somebody was talking about a soft opening versus a hard yeah. opening. Right. That yeah. was your idea, Richard. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Well, right. um, I so somebody was. It was a brilliant idea. So who uh, who's taking care of promotion when we figure out what when the the real opening is, not the soft one, but the real one, the grand opening. Um, Susan, is that your job to take care of promotion? Well, is this, or is this a volunteer thing from that's part of the we, I the mean, we just had a meeting with this person who's going to help us with some uh, social media stuff, and I think that that's the kind of stuff that we can be going with gangbusters on during the two weeks in July when when there's a lull in, in construction stuff at the site. Potentially, I mean, unless we're done around, with, I'm sorry. Unless we're done with construction by then. Unless we're, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that's that's the other thing. It's like who's who's to say that we can't be done by July 15th? Right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's really not that big a project, but yes, yeah, Susan. So, uh, housekeeping. Can we move yes. on to housekeeping? Yep, we are. A couple important things. Uh, speaking of people being gone, I am because we are trying to make things move and keep the pace going. I have a, an August and July uh, calendar here that I'd like to pass around. If you guys can put when you are not going to be available, or um, whether it's in town or it's busy with something else and there's no way you can help out, if you could just write write down those dates for me. I also have a phone and email list. It, um, I've been operating off of this myself, but it occurred to me that it would be nice to distribute it to the entire committee. So if you can look over your names, make sure that this is the phone number that you would like as your main phone number and it's the email that you want as your main email. And just initial it if it is. If it isn't, write in the things that you, I'm going to send this one around this direction and this one around this direction. And then I will, if, also if you don't want to be on a list that gets published to this committee, indicate such um, on that. Um, is everyone here intending to volunteer at the yes. recenter when it opens? Debbie, yes. yes. Then yes. obviously, Mac, yes. Uh, Peter? Yep. Yeah, okay. Most likely. David, great. Excellent. My heart wants to. <laughs> <laughs> you can send, send your heart. heart. Yeah. <laughs> and do we have any new business? Uh, anyone? New business? Oh, uh, Peter. Just a quick update on yesterday. At Birthday the, boy. At the um, <laughs> Whole Foods, the River Valley Market. If there, if there's not an audience that's tuned in to composting and recycling, I mean, they, they are it. And even they had a hard time figuring. They're out. not tuned in. Yeah. You mean they, they are? Oh, they are tuned in. The most tuned in, yeah. sorry, right. who are not not tuned in. Don't uh. worry. Um, and he still had a hard time. Those folding um, bins, the printing comes off, him, off of them after a while. Uh, without pictures, it's a complete waste of time. Cause mm -hmm. You need illustrations to show yeah. what goes yeah. where. I finally Agreed. came to, if, if there is an event, we, every, like there, everybody would know what is going to go into the waste stream at the end. So 
because you know you got plates and cutlery and cups and etc etc etc. I thought, well, the most obvious way is to customize the containers for each event. And simply having something like pegboard with clips and anything that is used at that event. <laughs> is there it's in there, front right. on clips so you can s oh where does this bottle cap go oh here mm -hmm. because it's clear and then you take the things down for the next event whatever they're using there you put those on that's yeah. as far as i've got it but i saw there's no point i mean without four people standing there at each yeah. one of these stations it would have been just a complete mess one person at each station i mean one person <laughs> but, i mean the four stations one person at each because alicia uh, alicia was there David was there, Daniel and myself, and it was, you know, without somebody that, no, this goes right. in there, that goes in there. Yeah, yeah it was the I same. I would argue, this. though, even with, even with graphical in instructions, you still need somebody there because people don't, they mm -hmm. just, their brain isn't there. They right. aren't, they don't yeah. have the awareness that we do. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. it's not a great idea, but I'm just saying you still, it's not going to be the, the panacea that we all hope it would well, be. Well, let me just, in Hatfield we had men who cook now, mm -hmm. everything, <laughs> and I sent them up to uh, Greenfield uh, to go get from the mm -hmm. distributor mm -hmm. there. <coughs> everything except for a few styrofoam cups that found their way in there, uh, was, was mm -hmm. compost. Great. So, if it is, if a, an event is set up that way, it's right. really, really easy. Um, but we're, we had this debate going on about these plastic cups that the they were supposed to be greenware, compostable, but they weren't. And then they were number one plastic, which is sometimes recyclable, sometimes not. Not and in a cup, it's not. Yeah, yeah. right. So there so was a debate. It's <coughs> all going into recycling because they insisted, and I don't believe it is recycling. So here's what I came back with. Um, Dorian, who's the president of the board there, uh, Roz, um, Rochelle, who's the manager, Tom, um, who's the, who w was in charge of that event, all expressed a real interest in if we can come up you, with them in like developing a really good recomposting, recycling, event-driven um, system. So I, I think having a meeting with them and basically working on next year already, but then seeing how that would... Not just for the Strawberry Social, but in general. Right. All, for all events, right. anywhere in the valley, you know, mm -hmm. because it's the lack of uniformity, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. having to interpret words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we've worked a lot on that in Amherst, because the taste of Amherst mm -hmm. is mostly compostable, and the um, ultimate Frisbee tournament, that's an international tournament, has gone, you know, so... I have lots of stuff that can help. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can at least start with that, and if if they want to tailor it, or Northampton has a different um, look or, or um, mission. It, it's actually important because if, if something doesn't exist, then there's nothing for people to look toward, and people aren't going to go out of their way mm -hmm. to find something like that. But if you have a uniform thing that can just mm -hmm. be a one-size-fits-all for all events, I think people would uh, hear it. A little, little anecdote. A, a, a mother with children, you know, running around, and she's got this big tray full of corn husks and cutlery, and all mixed up. And she takes a look at the bins, and uh, she's got to figure yeah. it out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so jumped in there. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> but she was like. She couldn't handle it yeah. at that point. Yeah, and that's she, how a lot of people yeah, are. It's like they, they're, they're, they just David, don't have I the energy. Hadn't to been there, you know, the, she would have just taken the whichever container was closest mm -hmm. and that was in the right way. So, so we got to work this out. We, if we have dirty garbage, it's, it messes everything up. The garbage. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've got to get this composting, which the state realizes. Because otherwise, you're going to have forever contaminated garbage, you know, smelly, disgusting, da da da. Um, move for adjournment, anybody? Yes. Yeah, second? Uh, oh, right, we have another have before we adjourn. And you know what, I'm not often here till the end, but um, I wanted to introduce the concept of at the very last minute before adjournment, we talk about follow ups. So, for instance, on this, follow up on the, on the meeting for July 10th with 
David, David, Susan, and myself follow up on uh, just different mm -hmm. assignments that have come up during the meeting, and it's just a way to sort of summarize maybe mm -hmm. what it's just a, okay. it's a protocol we use, and I'm mm -hmm. just thinking it might be helpful. In the okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move for adjourn, but maybe this should be open for discussion. Okay. So uh, in that case, we should start with Paul Spector's uh, yes. proposal to have us either as a committee or it seems like we can't do anything as a committee until we meet on July 10th and exactly. have approval from the BPW. And so we'll but if people want to respond individually, yeah. that's fine. Um, the mission objective committee, we already have our call to action, right? We're going to meet and hopefully we'll come up with some ideas individually before we get together. Uh, do homework before we meet. Yes, homework right. before. Uh, Marianne Labarge, I will contact her about uh, the reuse center and let her know, I mean, that there's going to be additional traffic heading out to the, uh, um, and I will be in touch with Dave Pomeroy. Recenter, um, next steps. Working tomorrow and mm -hmm. making sure the permit's in hand and, uh, and everybody signs the release form who hasn't right. planning on being up. And we're meeting Tuesday at my house, right? Because Susan's yes. not. Susan's out of town, so we need your house. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the next thing is this committee, I wonder, too. Did right. you get that, David? That the, re yeah, the, 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 the working group for the recenter is oh. going to meet oh, meeting oh, at, at Debbie's house on Tuesday, Tuesday. At, Tuesday at 8, at 9. Okay. <laughs> um, at 6. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can we settle on 7? <laughs> uh, the last thing we talked about was um what was that? oh the strawberries are coming up with a uh kind of a protocol is it for composting or recycling both at events yeah for for what we were doing last night how to make that work okay much better so waste separation at an event what's what's yeah. the next yeah. step for that actually getting to rochelle and yeah. seeing if we can well but this isn't just for yeah, find, find, I mean, find yeah. Yeah. So maybe we should wait for Susan to get back and be available to, could, to be a part be of a committee to meeting. Because, I know because this is not about River Valley too. Market. This is going to be citywide, yes, right? Absolutely. I'd, I'd like well, to be able to go to the wide. campus school and say, yes. here's how we do events right. now. Yes. Valley wise. I have, yeah. I have signs already that, that are um, used that are based on some that Franklin County developed, and I have graphics. Okay, Susan, you're going to put it on your agenda to get in touch with us when you have all those materials together and you're available to present them, because I, I would actually like to be on that okay. committee. So um, we're going to meet amongst ourselves first and then go to River Valley? Yes. Yes. We're going to go to them with a proposal. Okay, Ro, do I have your move to adjourn? Oh. Move to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Second. Okay. We are adjourned at 841. Uh, 10, 941. <laughs>